Life is never a breeze for anybody. We all have to struggle at some points in our life. Just like the seniors of Regent Park, who have experienced some problems that are not known or understood by others. To get a better understanding of the seniors of Regent Park, we interviewed a couple of people. We spoke to two seniors who had strong opinions, one person who works with seniors, and one professional who focuses on senior health. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Berry with Regent Park Focus. This is part of a documentary that we are doing concerning issues regarding seniors here in the Regent Park area. I am joined here with my two guests. If both of you could introduce yourselves. Monica Gora with the Salvation Army. And Sita Bailey. Good to meet both of you. Nice mm -hmm. to meet you. Recently, there was some redevelopment in the Regent Park area that we were told about. Could you give us what you feel the social climate has been like in Regent Park since the redevelopment? So there is, like I said before, it was 100% um, uh, housing. And now it's going to be, uh, I believe, um, if it still is, going to end up being 70% market rent and then 30% um, housing. And so um, I feel that some of the, the people who live here um, were feeling a bit kind of disconnected from that. So um, the community was super, super really family-like and condensed, right? And then <clears throat> families who lived here their whole lives were moved out. And as you've said, you've lived here since the 70s. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, too. I feel like I'm a stranger walking in a different community because there's a lot of the people who used to live here. Maybe I see quarter dozen of them. I do not see enough of them return back. I do not know if they don't want to come back. Because <laughs> it may be so all I see is strange face. So the region part is my home. And I'm proud to be a region partner. I raised ten children in the region part. And I was living across the road here, the called Passion Avenue. All my children, them, and families, them that I know, move out of Regent Park. So I'm the one that still gets stuck here. But I don't think I'm going to move until they take the six person take me out. <clears throat> living in Toronto, like I've lived in Toronto for for a long, long time. Regent Park is one of these neighborhoods where the community is so important and that's what i mean by i feel still feel like it's somewhat the same because the people who live here still want it to be community right they still want to be family together right and and you can really really see that and it's special you know with every person that i've talked to about regent park there's always that same idea of community that they tell me about powerful one does living in such a condensed area affect your mental state? The only thing that pisses me off is when the two elevator network in mm -hmm. and you have to walk it from, I uh, live on the 19th floor to walk it down. You know, I tried a few times and when I reach the bottom, my knees shaking like hell. Shaking so. So there was like a, a contract issue with the seniors building that um, the elevators were outsourced from another country. Um, so when they broke down, they had to get the parts from that country, and so it was very difficult um, to to maintain the elevators. And sadly, that was one of the biggest issues because there was people actually um, dying because of it. So there would be someone who had a heart attack, and they. Had, the paramedics couldn't get to them or they were stuck in their apartments or and, and they're trying to figure out a way to fix that. So this building was supposed to be all seniors and there's a small percentage that that's not seniors. Um, <clears throat> the other buildings are either market rent or there's buildings that are half, half housing and half market rent. 
Um, the only problem is, is what people have said to me is um, it, it's unfortunate because the people in the condos have their amenities, you know, the gym or the sauna or whatever it is. And so they actually put a separate entrance for the people that are in housing. So they have to go through a separate entrance so they can't access what the condo people are accessing in the building. Um, <laughs> the price of living in Toronto in general is very high. The price of food is high. Price of rent is high. That's in all of Toronto. Um, I do know that they uh, try to do like farmers markets around the area and that, and, and help supplement people's with their food. We run a program on Fridays where we get a donation of um, fresh produce, potatoes, um, bread, and that, and we come to the area and we we give it out to the seniors because it's it's difficult. No matter where you go in Toronto. Yeah, no matter where you go. You know, it doesn't matter where you live, what you buy, and groceries. It's the same thing with clothing. When you come being a senior, you only just got a certain amount of money mm -hmm. to live on. By the time you pay everything all out, you got nothing to live on mm -hmm. from this day to that day period. Yeah. Being in such a specific area of Toronto. I wanted to know, how is it that you socialize in Regent Park? Living in these big high-rise apartments and being so close together, is socializing an issue? There are people in the seniors building that um, don't leave their apartments. I think that's in any um, seniors building you will see a lot of that now the agencies in the neighborhood they really try to put together events and put together um, volunteering opportunities for people there was a big community event we did 1425 uh, meals at a barbecue there was music and and there's opportunity for that but sometimes people are nervous to go out because they're not sure of the area or they're not sure of, of the, the surrounding community and so a lot of agencies now have come into the building so that there's opportunity to go um this is the seventh floor it's like a like a community area where you can run programming and get people to socialize and and, and do that what do you think i'd say do you have trouble socializing no no what if i want don't want to <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear only if I don't want to, but I'm okay so far. Now, in the United States, where I'm from, whenever citizens reach a certain age, we have a lot of pension options for them when they retire. We also have a program that we do called Social Security, which guarantees that once you reach the age of 65, mm -hmm. depending on your, I believe, your work history or the, the amount of money you've made over time. It's the same here. Really? Yeah, it's the same here. What's difficult is if you have a senior that is on, uh, let's say they have a disability and they're on ODSP and you get a certain amount of money and it's quite more than it is than the pension right so it's difficult sometimes a lot of times when people are transitioning from that and getting less money and not only that their your prescription options are different as well and as you know but the older you get the kind of more chance the prescriptions you have to be on but it's all depends on because some seniors like in my case mm -hmm. is that because when i'm 65 i have to figure out my wheelchair, my power wheelchair that I have to pay for when it goes, and plus my medicine. And those are things are not cheap. The one I got is not cheap. About two years ago, I used to curse every time I go to pick up my medication at the pharmacy. Why do I reach this age and I have to pay for my medication? I have to pay a part for my medication. So one day I went to the pharmacy about <laughs> almost two years ago, and then the pharmacy said to me, said, oh, Elsada, you can pull out this form. You don't have to pay anymore. 
there's a lady come here sir just like you every month oh. <laughs> you still have to pay it's like a hundred dollars though right a year yeah no. well n not really i mean uh, i have somebody who's going to check into that for me they're both paying a hundred dollars if you make less than then what it is a year you don't have to pay anything but no, I don't pay anymore. I got my medication for so now. It's, now it's yeah. free. Good. For the last two years, and I got. But you still free. pay a hundred dollars a year. No, though. I don't pay anymore. See, I don't. this is the third person that I've been heard so far. Well, then that's good. She doesn't have to pay a hundred dollars a year, but why should I have to pay every year? Why? So it's not right. No, when, no, no, no. It's when, not right. When you hit sixty-five, so that's the program that Susan's trying to find for you, so that you don't have to pay. It doesn't matter what program you in. You still have to pay a hundred dollars. Yeah. Come on now. You know, people like this here, they may tell you, oh, they don't have to pay, but they do pay. But they con themselves and they con other people too. Do you pay the hundred dollars a year? I used to pay every time I buy my medication. Yeah, but no, I right right now do you do you have no, to pay? I'm seventy six, I don't pay for the last two years. So that's part of the problem too, right? So there's so many there's so much stuff in the government that is kind of like, it should be more known. Do you know what I mean? Like, so why is it that some can find like a, a program that you don't have to pay and then some do? It should just be really open to know why. And it's because pretty Because I used Susan, to hungry Susan, just Susan. like you too. Yeah. I'm pissed off. I used to hungry. Every time I go for my medication, I have to pay. I have to pay. I have to pay. We've definitely covered a lot in this span of time for this interview, but I want to leave it off with one thing. What do you hope for for the future of Regent Park? Or where do you see it going? I think more of it, there's going to be more condos and less housing around this neighborhood. In the future, it won't be a Regent Park at all. It'll be all different. That's my opinion. And then that's another a, thing too, they should have more of uh, police patrol around this area. When I first moved in this building, it used to be a security. Now there's no security here. People in this building, let any Tom, Dick, and Harry in this building. And, the, and when you come in the front door downstairs, if you look up on your waist, you can't let anybody in. So out of all the buildings, the seniors building, um, they feel has really kind of not been focused on enough and so they've had many talks with the Toronto housing and stuff about the elevator about some security issues and, and sometimes people here say they don't feel that they're being heard. Part of a community to a stranger they struggle to find a voice someone that will listen to them although they get financial support from the government the rise of rent food clothing and medicinal costs makes it harder for them to live day by day. The resources are available for these seniors, but are not known by many. To learn more about these resources, we decided to interview a professional that specialized to work with seniors. Hi everyone, my name is Punya Puri. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator at St. Michael's Family Health Center here at Regent Park. So family health team is a new concept in Canada, especially in Ontario, which started a few years ago. It's a, it's a part of the hospital where you have interprofessionally allied health team members. So you'll have the physicians, the physiotherapists, the dietitians, social workers, pharmacists, everybody under one roof. So if you're a part of a family health team, you can access all these allied health professionals for free. What is your favorite thing about Regent Park? It's really hard to pinpoint one specific thing. Um, Name a few things. Okay, so Regent Park has a lot of free resources for the community. There is a fantastic food resource at 40 Oak Street it's called Christian Resource Center. And St. Michael's Family Health Team has partnered a lot of programs with this uh, resource in the community. So we run a lot of community kitchens there. We do a lot of talks on prevention and management of chronic diseases. We also do ask a dietitian table during the drop-in uh, drop-in meal services, which is twice in a month. We there they run bingos, they run knitting club for the seniors. Like I said, my my personal favorite is a taste of Regent Park, where everybody from the community comes together and they do um, they prepare food, they do some shows, they show some movies in the evening. It's the community is 
for the people. I think the people have a sense of belonging here, and that's what touches my heart at Regent Park. Now, I want to ask a question Absolutely. regarding the health of seniors. Right. One big problem that I was told about is that a lot of seniors, once they enter a condo, they never really leave. And I feel like that has a big effect on mental health and Absolutely. physical health. Yes, they're lonely. That's the bigger problem. And that affects their overall nutrition intake as well. Kids move out, friends and you know family move on. So when they have to cook for one single person, it's a lot of chore for them. Coming out during winter times for the appointments, they have a fear of having falls or slips and having fractures. So they don't really go for their appointments. Although we were really thrilled to see that a lot of these condominiums do have a lot of recreational activities for the seniors, which they don't really make use of. So when we go for our talks in the community for the seniors' nutrition and healthy aging, we want them to come downstairs and talk to us and listen to our presentation and how we can shop on our budget and what things are important for the nutrition and overall health. It's very hard to talk about the mental health issues because we know that a lot of the people in the community are not from Canada itself. You know, majority of the population in Canada, they're, they're immigrants, right? So sometimes people don't get the sense of belonging in the community and they don't feel that they have the cultural specific resources or activities in the neighborhood. So they don't really connect to people, so I think that's that really affects the mental health for sure and their overall um, health. We also have income security workers who work fairly really a lot of with seniors because it helps them to organize their finances as well. So we have a great income security team as well over here, which is fantastic. So in addition to seeing patients, dietitians also do a lot of community outreach work. So like I mentioned, we do a lot of community kitchens at CRC 40 Oak Street. We do ask a dietitian table twice in a month. We also sit on a lot of committees within the hospital where we address social determinants of health as well. And we do a lot of quality uh, improvement uh, pilot programs as well. We know that the seniors have difficulty in mobility as they age, but um, personally, I would recommend to my patients uh, aqua classes. Aqua fit classes are really good. Your weight becomes lighter in water so it's easier on your knees and your back. So as we talk about the seniors, arthritis, bone pains is one of the topics which we commonly discuss among seniors. So these are some tips that the seniors can use to remain healthy.